Hello everyone, welcome back to the last video in the MPLS site-to-site -site VPN failover demo. Uh, what a what a mouthful. Anyways, uh, we went ahead and, well, let me actually just introduce myself in case you're watching this out of order. Uh, my name is Devin Adams and I am a Fortinet instructor for Dynamic Worldwide here in Tempe, Arizona. And I record these for my students uh, just so they can see it more than once. And this is the last part. So essentially this, this demo is complete. So... Uh, the real demo itself was configuring the, the link health checks, right, to monitor a site-to-site -site connection. And then we did the redundant VPN connections, connections from site-to-site -site as a backup. And then using the power of routing, right, the magic of routing, we went ahead and we prioritized uh, the point-to-point the -point network and only used the VPNs when we needed to. It even survived a multi-WAN failure there. Uh, that was kind of cool. So, But you know what? Um, unless we have the proper monitoring tools, we are not going to know about um, things that happen on our network, like it going up and down. And in reality, a lot of us have monitoring um, software suites, OK? Uh, so we are going to use, actually, in this class, because we only have two FortiGates here, uh, we're going to use the FortiGate itself to get an email or at least we're going to try. So this was kind of an impromptu last moment demo uh, as a request to Jerry. What's up, Jerry? Anyways, um, awesome guy, by the way. <clears throat> Anyways, now if I had a 40 um, analyzer, right, that's a log aggregator from um, from Fortinet, uh, I could do this on, on a very large scale and then even kick it up even more. Uh, it's like the 40 seam, right, which is there which is their network monitoring tool, which I actually haven't played with yet. But anyways, um, and then, of course, there's about a thousand other different vendors and solutions to do network monitoring. But let's get notified, all right? Uh, once again, this is not planned, so um, it might just fail miserably, and you guys might not even see this video. So uh, for starters, let me make sure my mail server is working, because I'm just using a, a ghetto fabulous, <laughs> not really ghetto fabulous, but just a little... A little uh, email server I created on the Linux box. And let's see if that's working. I tested it earlier, but I want to double check. So before I go forward, and never hurts to, to test connectivity. So let's just write a quick message. And I'll send that to students. Now, by the way, guys, this is the same email solution that we used in class for testing. So all right. All right. Something happened there. Um, let me go to my student box, get messages. Okay, so there it is, test. So at least mail's passing through, all right? Uh, that is not bad, so let me minimize that. So the FortiGate does have email alerting. So if we go down to our uh, login reports and we go to alert email, you can see that we can create an email for the FortiGates, and I suggest you do that. Don't, don't do it as an admin. Uh, or someone that works there simply because you know that way if you have to if you have to uh, replace that person or what have you it just become a mess so uh, the email server does have a FortiGate email address that it's going to come from and then uh, the FortiGate does allow three three um, uh, email addresses to be sent out at the same time now the only limitation about this at least what i have found is that you don't get any granularity after that so if you have someone that's responsible for like the security profiles and then you have someone else that's responsible for things like the uh, uh, disk utilization or maybe the actual networking tunnels themselves they're they're gonna get the same alerts uh, you need a 40 analyzer to get that kind of intelligence or that kind of granularity and the 40 analyzer is amazing for that but um anyways now if you do not see if you do not see alert email right that's because you do not have your email settings configured in the in the GUI so uh, I'm going to go over here to my system and I'm going to go to advanced just to show you where that is all right see the email server Okay, that is my Linux box and my default reply to. Now, normally there'd be some kind of authentication that you'd have to do. You'd get that from your from your uh, email admin <clears throat> if it's not you already. Now, I believe that your FortiGuard right service can do some kind of like notifications for you. Okay. Also, I know there's some options with the FortiCloud that are inexpensive or free. 
but in this case we're just going to use our email server all right and then the default reply to is going to go to whatever admins here so um, once you go ahead and configure an email server you'll then see it in the GUI all right so as alert email okay so let's go ahead and take a look let's see how we can do this so we have a threat weight now this is more going to be for alerts all right for security alerts um, in log settings themselves this is where you can go ahead and log events and this is what you have to check next so this is step three and that is your logging system events all right and there's a couple of different ways to do this now i'm going to just do the way that i know how to do it and that is going to be the vpn activity event all right um, now i know how to do it with the 40 analyzer because i can just simply say when an interface comes down right go ahead and notify me but i'm not quite sure uh, how to do that without some testing and like i said um, I'm winging this for right now, okay? So I'm going to actually monitor for VPN alerts. Now, I know that when the um, when the health monitor check pulls it, right, uh, it will create an event that does have some kind of threat level. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. Uh, let's go to our forwarding traffic log. All right, well, there's a whole bunch of 40 junk there. Hold up. Uh, maybe system event, is it? All right, there we go. So you see the threat level here for the link monitor? We could change everything to notice, but you'd be getting emails, right, until the cows came home. You, you probably would not want that. Now, this one's a little bit more relevant. Critical sounds important for the static routes being added automatically. That's another way that we could have it notify us, all right? So why don't we actually try that first, all right? That might not be a bad idea. That way we can... Um, classify threats also to a certain threshold and get emailed on those two. Um, let's see, let's see. But as you can see, the link monitor ones are more at a, a notification level, all right? And and we did talk about that in class. Remember the, the levels of uh, severity there, uh, the emergency um, alert, let's see here, um, so on and so forth. Elephants are calm, especially when not in danger. If, if you guys remember that from my class, anyways. So here we go, I'm, I'm just rambling, so. Let's just do this. I got to go home. So here we go. I'm going to send it based off of severity. And remember, it was critical. So the only problem with doing it like this is you might see a whole bunch of other stuff there. So um, we could also, how I was going to try it was through the, the VPN, um, the VPN tunnels going up and down, wherever those were. Uh, but let's just try that. So let's do uh, 40 gates at training.lab, right? And we're going to email it to admin at training.lab. And heck, we'll send it to student too. These were the the training accounts that we used in class. So there we go. So at least we're getting we're getting some alerts here. Now, um, I've actually never used just this bottom one. I've used this top one. And we had a, an interval threshold. So for example, if we had something like a... a a tunnel down or a license expiring right soon every five minutes we get an email and in class we adjusted that to one so we didn't have to we didn't have to wait so um maybe if i just try it to one because i don't want to wait here too long but let's go ahead and see if we get any emails when we drop that vpn tunnel so um, let me throw up the ping loop again which it's already there and this time i'm actually going to kill this switch it shouldn't matter to bring down the mpls network and let's just see if we get notified about it so um here we are see it didn't even take that so uh also there's the event dashboard for the ford analyzer too i teach the ford analyzer classes so i'm a big a big fan of those um let's go ahead and take a look at our system events here all right so right here we have a static route was removed. All right, I think that just happened. Um, changed from okay to failed. Now with the Ford Analyzer, I just make a, a keyword grabber right there to get notified specifically for the link monitoring flapping. Um, I could do that in another video if, if someone requests it. So, but let's see if it's actually gone. We should see, oh, we did. The IPsec tunnel is up, so. But did we get notified about it, right? So let's come over here and say get messages. And oh, look at that. 
Message meets alert condition, routing change information. Static route removed, MPLS down. So there you go. I did get an alert for it. So did my admin get an alert for it? That was the student account. And there you go. So uh, just in general, you know, um, it's, it's better than nothing for the email alerts. Now, normally that would be done through like a, a network monitoring tool, but at least the FortiGate has some level of being able to notify you. So Jerry, I hope that was okay for you, bud. Um, and as you can see, we can now get alerted when those changes happen. Should we see if, if it comes back up, if we get a, uh, if we get an alert, because we should, because it's a, it's a routing change and it was set to critical. And I guess that is pretty, pretty important, right? So, um, let's bring it back up. Okay. All right, there we go. Now that switch is a real switch, well, a real VM switch. Um, so it's going to take a minute, just a moment to come back up. So uh, we should be able to see that here when our packets come back to life on our MPLS interface. So, so while that is coming back up, just as a quick review, so just remember step one, get your... Um, get your admin, your email admin, to make the FortiGates their own independent email addresses, and also make sure that you get the settings. And step two, once you have the settings and the FortiGate accounts, you're gonna come over to a system, you're gonna go over to your advanced settings, and you're gonna make sure that there is an email server configured, because you might not even see the alert option in there. Now, once again, I have not set up the, the uh, FortiGuard services for emailing alerts, but I, I guess it's a part of the package, just kind of like the dynamic routing, right? And so once you got that in there, you can come down to the um, login reports, the alert email, okay, the FortiGate email. And what's also nice about giving individual email accounts for your FortiGates, and I would actually name the email account the same name that you give the host name to the FortiGates. So when you get that notification, you know exactly what FortiGate you're talking about. Now, there are people out there that have many FortiGates, uh, but it's still better than, than something obscure like that. What is this? What is this? I got an email alert. Ah, something's happening on my network. What is this? A static route was added back from my MPLS network. So there you guys go. So we're getting email alerts about them. So um, let's continue the the review here. Then we'll stop. I'm sorry, guys. Uh, I just got done teaching today and I'm a little slap happy. So, um, But step two would be to go to login reports, right? And go to uh, alert email. Now, if you're not using a Forda Analyzer or some other service to do this, because, you know, you can set up SNMP traps and, and all that good stuff, too. Uh, you get one, one uh, condition, right? Three people. And then here are the conditions. You can either do it individually, right, with all these send alert for the followings, or you can just say anything that's at a certain level. And I did not see anything here that really satisfied what I was looking for. So that's why I chose critical and it performed what I wanted. Um, I could probably also used, uh, I don't know which one there I could have used anyways. Um, Cause all of these just seem like straight up errors. These were more of just like an event happening. So, but, uh, but it worked. So, and that is the last, definitely test it, right? There's also the commands like the, um, the execute, maybe it's not execute, I better stop talking, but there's a diagnose test logs and it'll send a whole bunch of alerts for you. Um, you have to look up your 40 OS manual to, to see that. But um, all right, guys, so that is it. That's where I'll leave it. And thank you so much for joining me. Uh, that worked out pretty well. So once again, we did the load balancing, we did the health checks, we did the redundant VPN connections, we configured routing, we prioritized using the distance. We tested failover in multiple cases, and we also got notified. You know, I want to look at that one more time before I go, because that was just, oh, that was just beautiful. Can we see that? Look at those alerts right away. Boom, boom. Should we, should we kill it again? You guys can shut off the video. I just want to, I want to witness it again, because that was awesome. All right, so here we go. Did that happen already?
Yeah, I guess it did. All, all right. That was a uh, that was a lot quicker than I thought. That couldn't have been the same one. Let's let's take a look. That was a little that was a little too quick. Um, uh, let's take a look here. Forward traffic log. Nope. System events. Oh no, it did. It got removed. Okay. Uh, very cool. Very cool. So once again, guys, if you have the granularity, you can. Uh, uh, or if you need the granularity, you can go ahead and get yourself your network monitoring software to use like an SNMP trap, or you can get yourself something like the Forti Analyzer. But the FortiGate still does a pretty good job at a basic level. Um, oh, that was so cool. Anyways, hopefully uh, uh, my next... Oh, there it was. It probably came back up. I could do this all day long, but I better get home or my my wife will divorce me. So, all right, guys, thanks for watching. Um, if you have any questions, shoot me an email for my students there. Uh, I doubt it anyone's ever going to watch these randomly from YouTube, but uh, feel free to leave a comment if you want. I doubt it I'll ever get to it. I don't care if you subscribe, but um, I don't even know what subscriptions do, but it looked cool. I got my first one, by the way. So, uh, Jammer3, thank you so much for subscribing, my only subscriber. Um, but for those that are my, my actual participants, my students in my past classes, uh, feel free to request a demo, guys, because I know that seeing it once in class it is not enough to really digest what's happening. So um, it's it gives me pleasure to, to have an excuse to play out with these topologies and things like that, too. So thank you so much, and I will see you guys later, and uh, good luck.